Gunnar Heinsen, Wikipedia Audio Gunnar Heinsen is a German author, sociologist, an economist and professor emeritus at the University of Bremen. He was born on November 21, 1943 in Gotenhafen to Roswitha Heinsen, nee Maurer, and the late Kriegsmarine Kapitän Lieutenant Heinrich Heinsen, last serving on U-438. In 1984 he received a Lehrstuhl, a tenured chair in social pedagogy at the University of Bremen. Heinsen has published on a wide array of topics, starting from economics, demography and its relationship with security policy and genocide, and revisionist chronology theories in the tradition of Emanuel Velikovsky. Heinsen grew up in Broda and Position after the family fled from Gotenhafen at the end of the war. He attended school in Oberkassel, Bonn, and St. Peter Bull, where he received his abitur in 1964. He studied from 1964 at Freie Universität Berlin. He graduated 1971 in sociology and gained a 1974 summa cum laude doctorate in social sciences. Heinzen received a second doctorate in economics in 1982. In 1984, Heinzen became professor at the University of Bremen. He founded the Raphael Lemkin Institute für Xenophobie und Genocide Forschung a center for comparative research in genocide and xenophobia. The center was dissolved after Heinzen went in retreat. Heinzen has taught at the Management Centrum St. Gallen, at Hochschule Luzern and in demographic studies at the Bundesakademie für Sicherheit Politik in Berlin and at NATO Defense College in Rome. He has written various books and articles, been a regular in various media and talk shows and published entries at the Eichstig Juden weblog and Schweitzer Monat. Life and Work In collaboration with a famous colleague in Bremen, economist Otto Steiger, Heinzen criticized the barter paradigm of money. Instead of money a medium of exchange to facilitate barter, Heinzsohn replaced it with a property-based credit theory of money that stresses the indispensable role of secure property titles, contract law, and especially contract enforcement, liability and collateral to create secure, transferable debt titles that central banks will accept as collateral for issuing bank notes. T. Interest is being explained as a property premium instead. The paradigm provides institutional micro-foundations for monetary theories of production developed in the Keynesian tradition. Credit theories of money have existed since mercantilism but have not become the dominating paradigm in monetary theory. Besides promoting their paradigm as an alternative foundation for triggering economic development Tom Bethel and Richard Pipes, Steiger has applied it to an analysis of the euro system. While this approach has similarities with institutional economics, its major differences are a non-universalist, cross-cultural approach that is in line with results from economic anthropology and strongly doubts on the homo economicus concept. It provides instead a specific explanation of various strategies of economic efficiency become functional only in monetary economies based on property and enforceable contracts. Heinzsohn proposes a reconstruction of the connection between property, enforceable contracts, interest, credit slash money and the banking system and a possible explanation for technical progress and innovation. The difference in innovativity and progress between the monetary economics of antiquity and modern times is being explained as well. Heinzen and Steiger's model has been discussed in some post-Keynesian circles, and it has been criticized by Nikolaus K.A. Law for Heinzsohn uses demographic patterns to explain various historic events and tendencies. 
His work on genocide and anti-Semitism is strongly influenced by his demographic studies. In his theory about the youth bulge, Heinsen argues that an excess in especially young adult male population predictably leads to social unrest, war, and terrorism, as the third and fourth sons that find no prestigious positions in their existing societies rationalize their impetus to compete by religion or political ideology. Heinsen claims that most historical periods of social unrest lacking external triggers and most genocides can be readily explained as a result of a built-up youth bulge, including European colonialism, 20th century fascism, and ongoing conflicts such as that in Darfur, the Palestinian uprisings in 1987 to 1993 and 2000 to present, and terrorism. Heinsen has discussed the origin of modern European demographic patterns, including an interpretation of the European witch hunts of early modern times as pronatalist repopulation policy of the then dominant Catholic Church after the population losses the Black Death had caused. This interpretation has received mixed responses. It has been criticized and rejected by German historians Walter Rummel, Gunter Gieraskeck, Robert Juddy, and Gerd Schwerhoff. Replies to those criticisms can be found in. A historian of birth control John M. Riddle has expressed agreement. Heinsen's contributions to genocide research include an encyclopedia of genocides, a generalized version of youth bulge theory and a new theory of Hitler's motivation for the Holocaust. Heinsen suggested that Hitler wished to erase physically, intellectually, and spiritually the meaning and heritage of Judaism and Jewish ethics from Germany and its European allies by literally destroying the Jews as a people. In so far Heinsen explained the Holocaust as an attempt by Hitler and his Nazi cohorts to wipe out the memory and the idea of Jewish ethics. He intended to enable Germans as a people to wipe out and conquer other people and lands without being hindered by conscience or ethical norms. Hitler assumed ethical norms were brought into Western civilization on the part of the Jews and inherited by Christianity. On the origin of sacrifice and priest kingship in Mesopotamia, Heinsen suggested an explanatory model based upon a catastrophist view of ancient history and a psychoanalytic interpretation of sacrificial rituals. Heinsen holds that the Jewish people were the first in Occidental history to abolish sacrifice in the name of a general prohibition of killing thereby providing an example to other religions still practicing sacrifice that this is unnecessary. As the Jewish prophet Hosea stated, For kindness I desired, and not sacrifice, and a knowledge of God above burnt offerings. According to this view that is in some respects similar to a psychoanalytic view, Antisemitic hatred has its origins in the feelings of guilt towards the sacrificed human or animal, turning those feelings of self-hatred towards those who do not take part in the ritual of sacrifice allows for continuing with the sacrificial practice. Heinsen contrasts Jewish abstinence from sacrifice with the Christian belief in Jesus as someone who died for the Christian's sins which he interprets as a regression to sacrificial practices of prehistory and as a core source of Christian-Jewish controversy. Heinsen proposed a revision of ancient chronology. Taking Immanuel Velikovsky's revised chronology as a starting point, Heinsen went on to criticize Velikovsky's chronology as biblical fundamentalism proposing an even more drastic revision that is being disputed in circles of chronological revisionists. Research and Publications His work on ancient chronology, focusing on his views on the stratigraphic record, has resulted in some dramatic conclusions. Heinsen opined that the currently accepted chronology was entrenched long before the scientific investigation of the past based on the chronology provided in the Old Testament. 
he accused 19th century archaeologists of constructing their chronology around Bible synchronisms and of, more or less, following the chronology recorded by Eusebius in the 4th century, who made use of the histories of Egypt and Mesopotamia as well as the Old Testament. According to Heinsen, Bible synchronisms led to Pharaoh's Menes and Ramesses II being dated to the 4th millennium and the 14th century, respectively. As a result, Heinsen concluded that they created a phantom history of 2,000 years. In contrast, Heinsen interpreted stratigraphic evidence to suggest that Egyptian and Mesopotamian civilizations arose around 1200 BCE, not 3200 BCE, as the textbooks say. Heinsen's ideas on ancient chronology were introduced to the English-speaking world in the Velikovskian journal Cronus in 1985. They have found support with a small number of writers and academics, most of whom are favorably disposed towards Velikovsky, amongst whom are Professor of Philosophy Lynn e. Rose, Professor of Classics at Bard College William Mullen, Professor of Art History Louis M. Greenberg, speechwriter and longtime observer of the Velikovsky scene Clark Welton, German author Harry Bert Illig, and British writer Emmett Sweeney. However, his views have been severely criticized by several students of Velikovsky inspired ancient chronology revision, Ian editor Duardo Cardona, New Zealand researcher Lester Mitchum, University of New Orleans Professor of History William H. Stibing, Jr., British researcher Anthony Rees and Ian publisher F. Cochrane. In 2016 Heinsen received the Liberty Award. John M. Riddle about Heinsen, Gunnar Heinsen is one of the rare individuals who deserve the accolade Universal and International Scholar, because his intellect cuts across disciplines reconceptualizes hypotheses, and proposes theories truly original and challenging. His far-ranging contributions include cross-culture theories about markets from anthropology to economics, Judaic history from early Israelites to the 20th century, and ancient chronology. To list Professor Heinsen's disciplinary range would virtually list a university curriculum in the humanities and social sciences. To me, his work. Economics Demography Youth bulge and lack of fertility Historical demography Genocide and anti-Semitism Revision of ancient chronology Citation Main Publications <laughs>